on the policy on December, you added a vehicle to your policy, yeah, which generated a bill for January of three ninety eight and seventy seven cents. Yeah. Now you had made a payment of one uh, two hundred dollars. You account for that, and then you schedule a payment for one ninety eight seventy seven. But that two hundred dollar payment was one ninety eight seventy seven. It got canceled, so we still owe that 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 payment. So you schedule the two ninety the the one ninety eight to come out on the on the second. I'm sorry, on the eighth of February. But in a sense, we we still a little behind. Now, if you need more time, I can do that for you. That's no problem. But how come uh, uh, I I got a payment that was. Um, your representative uh, 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 it introduced the payment, which was canceled, but then she charged the payment again because I have the documents here. I have one page that says this email confirms um, that um, a payment of $198.77 has been scheduled for 2-8-2016. Uh, that was after she charged the account. Uh, and I see that she charged the account for the $200, and then um, she um, made the rearranged the payment, and then she canceled that payment. But then she charged the the uh, account again. You know what I mean? So the the payment should be still on the $198. Are you following? Exactly. You pay two hundred dollars, and then you schedule the the other half, if you were the one ninety eight, to be paid on the on the ninth or the eighth of February. Yes, we agreed on the eighth, the representative and and myself. Right now, February 9th, your February payment is due, which is two hundred dollars and sixty nine cents. No, there there was nothing due on February ninth. Uh, the only thing that was due on February 9th was the $198.77, and that would uh, cover until March, until the uh, policy finished. So the policy starts in March, so your payment is due for the renewal on February. Exactly, exactly. Yes, honey, but what we agreed on, uh, when I spoke to uh, the other representative on the 14th of January, she charged the $200, and then she said, all you have to do is pay the remaining balance, which is $198.77, $198.77. And then that would cover you until March, until the renewal of the policy comes up. And then on March, you will pay for the renewal. Exactly. If that was the correct information, then you wouldn't have a payment in February for the month of February, which is not correct. You pay March, February. You always pay 30 days in advance. Your renewal payment is due on February. And then you still have that 198 that was due from January. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I can I can emotionally give you more time. That's not going to be a problem. No, but I, what, I, what I thought was that I, I was under the impression that since I paid the $200 and then the, the other representative, GEICO representative, told me that I only had to pay the, um, the remaining balance, which was $198.77 on, um, on uh, March, but uh, since it was uh, due 30 days before, then I would have to pay for the uh, March um, 30 days before, which was now in uh, February, but you're saying that I have to pay the remaining of this uh, policy, which is 198.77, right. and then pay for the the, the renewal of the policy uh, of the oh, next right. six months, uh, 30 days ahead of time. That's what you're saying. Right, because if you look at your payment uh, breakdown, your policy start, goes 
goes from March until September. Mm -hmm. You make payments February until July. So they're always like 30 days in advance mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of your six payments. So it starts February 9th, and then adding the 198, that's what's making it the 409. Mm -hmm. we, I do have it scheduled to just take the 198 on the eight, so it's going to just leave you with 210 coming out of the night, and we're not going to take also 409. Um, but if you want me to disconnect that for now to give you more time, we can do that. That's no, not a problem. Yes, yes. The, the, what I was uh, 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 under the impression of was that the automatic payment that the other lady and I uh, set, was setting up was uh, the 198, and then after the 198, then the other payments were going to be divided. You said that it, they were going to be divided into six um, six uh, different times. So if Exactly, six payments. So uh, how much each payment is going to be exactly with the cents and everything? Right. So the first one, which will be the one on, on February, that is two ten and 69 cents. And then from March until July, you're looking at $200.69. 269 cents. Okay, so um, I could pay the one ninety eight now and seventy seven uh, the one ninety eight seventy seven the uh, doing the upcoming uh, February eighth uh, automatic payment that would be in the in the bank so okay. the, there won't there there won't be a problem with that payment uh, and then when could I pay? Um, for the, the the six other payments are going to be March and the next one and the next one and the next one. No, all is going to be on the on the ninth of the month. So what we we can do if I disconnect the automatic payment, you want to once you pay the one ninety eight on the seventy uh, on the seventy seven cents on the eighth, then it's automatically going to give you two more weeks for February's payment to be paid. No, the problem is that I don't want to disconnect the automatic because. Uh, I'm going to say four dollars if I if I leave it on automatic, but is is it possible to? Let me ask you this: after um, the one hundred ninety-eight dollars and seventy-seven cents, then uh, the automatic is going to withdraw the money from my checking account uh, six times more to pay for the next six months. Correct? Yeah. Okay. And it's going to always do it on the ninth of each month, correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. So, um, can the uh, two uh, can the uh, one ninety eight uh, and seventy seven be withdrawn the eighth of February, and then um, that would give him one more day uh, to get the money in. So, on the ninth of um, February. Could it take the, the first payment of the next six months, the $200.69? Yeah, absolutely. We can do that. We can split it that way. Okay, but it would be automatic, so I can save my $4, yeah. right? Yeah, if you leave it as it is right now, that's what it's going to do. We'll take the 198 77 on the 8th, and then we take the 210 on the 9th. Oh, okay, okay, I understand now. I, yes, I didn't understand that before. Okay, okay, I got you now. Thank you so much, uh, Lydia. My pleasure. No problem. You have a wonderful rest of your day, okay? Okay. Uh, another question. Oh, yeah. Do you know why um, every time uh, um, somebody crashes into my car, uh, I have to pay, even though it's not my fault, I have to pay for the damages uh, and it's marked uh, no fault, uh, even though I have um, evidence and I give the the uh, adjuster evidence of the uh, crash when somebody crashes into me, like uh, on the incident of uh, Feb uh, of, of uh, January 12, 2016, the one at the um, gas station when the illegal alias mafia member tried to assassinate uh, elderly citizen Luisa Yasun, uh, she crashed into me uh, with a huge uh, 4x4 
while I was in my Toyota uh, Corolla, and uh, then took off. But I gave I gave my adjust adjuster uh, a video of the license plate. Uh, I emailed that to him, and I also um, gave him the uh, information and told him that the um, uh, place, the gas station located at 60 Elm Street in Yonkers, New York, has the uh, video security cameras, and um, they would see that uh, she crashed into me. Um, why is it that I have to pay always for the damages? When somebody is the uh, is at fault and not myself, uh, isn't that the other way around? When somebody crashes into me, the per the other person has to pay uh, for the damages. How come it's um, the other way around with me? Right. So I I don't have a lot of information in place that I can certainly get that department. But normally the way it works is that if we are unable to get a hold of that person or is it like a hit and run situation. If you have uh, the coverages, then you would have to cover that under your collision. Yes, because I have full covered for 17 years with GEICO now. But my question is, the adjuster has the license plate of this person. So is she going to be responsible, held responsible at all for this uh, incident? I can take a look. I mean, I, I don't have the, the answer for you, Ms. Martinez, but if you give me a moment, I can take a look and see if they have uh, if they have looked into that for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Just give me a quick moment, George. I can get my colleague in the line for you. Thank you.